The launch vehicle is brought to a vertical orientation using simple, low-cost means that treat the vehicle gently. A weight is attached to the aft end of the launch vehicle by a long tether. The slow descent of the weight through the water pulls the launch vehicle to a vertical orientation. In 1984, a large concrete block was used as the weight to erect the commercial Dolphin launch vehicle at its launch site near Catalina Island, California. This vehicle was over 50 feet long. Tests conducted by the U.S. Navy indicated that the floating vehicle remains within three degrees of the vertical, even in moderately heavy seas. Use of cryogenic propellant has already been demonstrated for floating launch. Here, the Dolphin launch vehicle is shown venting vaporized liquid oxygen. Tests by Aerojet General Corporation show that performing engine ignition underwater is significantly smoother than ignition in air. Mid-Pacific launch permits a wide variety of useful orbits to be reached from a single launch site near Hawaii. The Aquarius launch vehicles would be transported empty from California to Hawaii and stored on land in a Hawaiian seaport until launch preparations began. The barge used for launch support would also be used for long-distance transport. Only a small number of launch vehicles would be launched by a barge on a single day, but many would be transported dry on a single barge from a California port such as Long Beach to a port such as Kauai Hai on the Big Island of Hawaii. The vehicles would not be fueled and loaded until ready for launch. Barges cannot reach inland factory sites, such as those in the Central Valley, where production might be more economical due to the high cost and limited availability of waterfront property. The launch vehicles are too large to transport by road. Therefore, they would be shipped by rail. Rail transportation has many advantages due to its low cost, high capacity, and its accessibility even in areas far inland. The Union Pacific Railroad was consulted during this study. Just like the barges recommended for ocean transport and launch support, trains represent mature, low-cost, low-tech means to support this project. Railroad trains can accommodate the very long launch vehicles. The launch vehicle is mounted on a single load-bearing flat car. Due to its 130-foot estimated length, the vehicle overhangs two adjacent flat cars, which are referred to as idler cars. This arrangement was recommended by Union Pacific Railroad. Transport within a freight yard or within the back lot of a factory would be handled by a properly configured semi-truck. This truck might be too long to be permitted on roads, but would be acceptable in a restricted access area. Semi-trucks would assist with loading and unloading the launch vehicles from trains. Configuration of the launch vehicle and avoidance of obstacles are issues when the train travels over curves. An actual railroad has more gentle curves than this scale model. Union Pacific Railroad reports that a launch vehicle of suitable length can be transported from Palmdale a candidate inland factory site, to Long Beach, a candidate seaport. The payload carried into space by Aquarius will be detached from the launch vehicle by a space tugboat and ferried to its destination. The Aquarius payload configuration will be made compatible with standards developed by current orbital servicing studies. Studies conducted by Space Systems Loral indicate that a space tugboat is feasible and could be derived from current operational spacecraft designs, such as the Global Star and Loral Spacecraft 1300 buses. In conclusion, the means and the market for low-cost launch of consumables are developing. The concepts displayed here point the way for technical development of the launch vehicle. The studies funded by DARPA and NASA to commercial companies demonstrate that this market is being developed at the federal level. Successful businesses built upon the supply of consumables and other items of general use are a part of California history from the gold rush up through Silicon Valley. 
Aquarius is a new application of this time-tested business plan. Like selling shovels to gold miners, it will provide mundane but necessary supplies to more exciting, high-payoff space projects. Aquarius will support broader, beneficial use of space by providing supplies and support for a wide variety of space missions. Individual space projects will come and go, but Aquarius will remain, furthering humanity's development of space. The use of floating launch appears advantageous to minimize cost and risk. Virtually all American floating launch research was conducted in California. California is well suited to be the site for the production of this new low-cost launch vehicle due to its many Pacific seaports and the wide choice of inland factory sites that are accessible by rail. The Aquarius low-cost launch vehicle concept holds promise not only for the low-tech sectors of our economy, but for the development of new facilities and hundreds of aerospace jobs for California.